Hi, I'm Charlie Isaacs. I'm a housing lawyer at Uptown People's Law Center, and I'm here to walk you through the changes to the Illinois eviction moratorium. Now, for those of you who can't stay long, I'll put it briefly. With the new moratorium, landlords are not allowed to file evictions unless you qualify for the moratorium by fulfilling four criteria. First, uh, you fulfill an income requirement. Second, you make best efforts to pay rent on time. Third, you fall behind on rent due to COVID-19. And four, you are at risk of homelessness if you were to lose your housing. If you fulfill that criteria, then what you have to do is you sign and submit a declaration form that basically says that you fulfill this criteria and you swear to it under penalty of perjury. Where do you find those forms? At these two websites right here. Illinois Housing Development Authority.org, IHDA.org and rentprevention.com. Now I know that that's a lot of information that I just kind of unloaded. That's a lot of information. So uh, if you can hang around with me, I'm gonna walk you through how all this stuff works. So first, let's make sure that we're on the same page here. Remember that evictions are not singular events. It's a process. Before the actual removal of a person from the home, the landlord first has to do an eviction notice a five-day notice to give you a five days to cure the problem, pay whatever you owe. After those five days, if you don't pay what you owe, then the landlord can do an eviction filing, file a lawsuit, an eviction action. Then the landlord has to wait to get an actual eviction order by the judge. And then and only then, not the landlord, but somebody from the office of the sheriff of Cook County can come and actually enforce the eviction. So. It's a process. I think it's important to bear that in mind as we talk about this moratorium. To understand the changes, let's look at where we were before. So before, what we had was a blanket ban on evictions. For several months, starting over the summer, Governor Prisker was renewing and extending a 30-day ban on evictions, both eviction filings and the enforcement of evictions both of those things. The only exception were situations where the renter was deemed to be a direct threat to other people in the building or an immediate risk to security in the building. That was the only exception. Otherwise, everybody was protected from, again, both eviction filings and the enforcement of evictions. Now, that is what changed the last week, November 13th, with the new eviction moratorium. Now, just like the other ones, this was extended for another 30 days, but it's narrower now. It's narrower in three different ways. There's three big changes that have been made. First, in order to be protected from an eviction filing, a renter has to qualify for the protection. Now, again, this is only for the eviction filing. The same old rule applies with enforcement. No eviction enforcement through December 12th unless you're a direct threat to the building, immediate risk to others. But with eviction filings, now you actually have to be eligible and meet these criteria. The second thing is that even when you meet those criteria, you also have to sign and submit a declaration form. The declaration form says that like you swear under penalty of perjury that you're telling the truth, that you fulfill this criteria and you're protected by the moratorium. The third and final really big change within moratorium is that if a landlord wants to file an eviction, they have to first provide you, the tenant, with a copy of the declaration form so that you have a chance to review it, sign it, and submit it so that you can be protected from that eviction filing. So I know that's a lot. It's a lot of information. Let's walk through each of those one at a time. The first one is the limiting eligibility for the moratorium. Like I said, before the moratorium, everybody, all the renters were shielded from eviction filings. But now, a renter has to qualify for that protection. So what is the eligibility? Here you go. So, like I mentioned in the very beginning of this presentation, there are four eligibility criteria. First, there's an income requirement, and I'll get back to that in a second. Second, you have to have been a renter that fell behind on rent due to COVID-19 because of maybe you lost a job, you lost wages, you lost hours, or your expenses went up due to the pandemic. Third, 
you did your best to keep up with your rental payments. You tried, maybe you did partial payments, you, you did your best, taking into consideration your costs for your necessities. What are necessities? Medicine, winter clothing, child care, phone and internet access, and of course, food. So um, best efforts there, that's the third criteria. Fourth and finally, you have to be a renter where the loss of your housing would cause you to have a severe risk of becoming homeless or having to go into a shelter. So those are the four criteria. Let's go back to income requirement. Income requirement's a little funny. There are three ways that you can fulfill it. The main way is if you expect to make under $99,000 in 2020, or if you file as a, uh, as a couple, uh, if you file jointly, then it would be under $198,000 in 2020. The other way is if you got a stimulus check. And the third and final way for the income requirement is if you were not required to file taxes in 2019, if you weren't required to report your income. Those are the three ways in which you can fulfill the income requirement. So if you are able to fulfill all of these, then you would be able to be protected from evictions, from an eviction filing. Now, it doesn't end there though. See, before in the old moratorium, you would have automatic protection from eviction filings. But that's the other really big change. Submitting a declaration form. See, now you can't just qualify. You have to actually also submit a form. Now, what is a declaration? The declaration is, it's a special form. It's this fancy thing where you're basically saying, hey, I meet the criteria for eviction protection and I swear to it under oath, under penalty of perjury. So this is just like being on a witness stand. If you were on a witness stand and you lied, you would be at risk of maybe going to jail or being fined or having that held against you in court. Same thing. You don't want to mess around with this form. You don't want to lie because you could face some pretty severe consequences. The other thing I want to say about this form is that signing and submitting this form is an acknowledgement that you've fallen behind on rent, which means that it could make it easier for the landlord down the line to prove that you owe rent. So for some people, you may want to take, take a second to think whether or not you want to actually sign this form. I'm not trying to discourage it at all. I'm just saying that you may want to talk to a housing lawyer, but if you know that's not to dissuade you from signing this, especially if you're at a severe risk of an eviction and you have a high priority of holding onto your housing right now. In that case, if you qualify based on these criteria and if you sign and submit the declaration form, then until December 12th, you will be protected from an eviction filing. So that's how that part works. You may be wondering, where do you find this declaration form? It's these two websites, isga.org and rentervention.com. Let's take a look at these websites real quick. First, ihda.org. Remember, IHDA stands for Illinois Housing Development Authority. So I just typed this into the Google. And click right here. And look at that pop up window. Look what it says rental relief program update, eviction moratorium update. You can immediately get information about how to do this declaration form. There's a link right here. Let's click on it. And voila, that's your declaration form right there. This just lists all the criteria I described earlier. You would sign it, put your date there, and give that to your landlord. So that's pretty easy, right? But here's another one that's really great that I like. This is rentervention.com. All right, let's go to that. Okay, so it's asking you some questions. This is like an automated bot, and it's asking you, how can I help you? Well, we're talking about preventing eviction, right? So we're going to click here. Let me go ahead and uh, put in a zip code. Welcome to Rentervention. I'm here to help with COVID issues. I understand you want help with preventing eviction. Is that correct? Yep. And look what it says. On November 13th, Governor Pritzker ordered landlords not to evict some tenants. Do you want to see if you're protected? So you would push yes and you would keep going. That would eventually lead you to be able to see if you would qualify based on the criteria we already talked about. And then it would populate a declaration form that you can then print out or email to your landlord. So that's how those websites work. It's pretty easy. Now, Let's say, however, that you are one of the inevitably many, many people who either forget or don't know anything about these forms. 
Well, that's why there's this third really big change that comes with the new moratorium. Landlords must provide the form. So if a landlord wants to file an eviction, first they have to do that notice. But before they even do that five-day notice, what do they have to do? They have to provide the tenant with a copy of the declaration form. This is to ensure that everybody has a chance to take advantage of the protections that come with the moratorium. This is really important because if a landlord even gives you a five-day notice, forget about the filing. If they give you a five-day notice without first giving you a copy of that declaration form, there's a chance that this whole thing could get thrown out in court, which is why it's really important for you to pay close attention to what your landlord is telling you and what your landlord is giving you. That leads me to some larger advice that I wanna give you as uh, we wrap up this presentation. Document everything. Keep track of everything that your landlord says to you, emails you and gives you, and vice versa, by the way. When it comes to uh, making your best efforts to pay, you wanna keep track of everything that you do to try and make payments, all the hardships that maybe get in the way, your efforts to contact the landlord to make arrangements for a payment plan, things like that. If you sign the declaration, take a photo of the declaration form before you hand it over. If you drop it in a drop box or slip it under the door of your landlord, take a picture of that or even take video of that as you're doing it. Anything you can do to fully substantiate the fact that you've done your part, you've done your responsibilities to take advantage of this moratorium. That's what it means to document everything. Now, almost done. I wanna remind everybody, this is a moratorium that's gonna last until December 12th. We don't know what's gonna happen after December 12th. Maybe they will take this moratorium and extend it for another 30 days, or maybe they'll tinker with it, or maybe they'll go back to the old moratorium, or maybe they will drop the moratorium entirely. We don't know. But as soon as we do know, we will let you know. But you know this. During this period, this is how things are working. You need to sign and submit this form, and you need to be eligible. And if you don't know about it, your landlord has to give you a copy of the form before they file an eviction. If you have questions, if you need more information, if you need to talk to an attorney, I recommend going to rentervention.com. Same place where you got the declaration form. You can also get in touch with an attorney. If you have questions about the presentation that I just gave, here's my email address. Charlie at uplcchicago.org. My name is Charlie Isaacs. I work on tenants' rights at the Uptown People's Law Center. And I hope this presentation was really helpful for you. So um, thanks so much for watching and listening. And stay safe.